Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is Jonas Reports for the 11th of May. Well, we've got a continuation from that strong MBI magenta here on the uh, ES. Of course, uh, we've been talking about the NASDAQ being the leader still is the case. A um, little bit of up and down within that and nothing too surprising. I mean, we're in this sort of uh, consolidating of the gains and Literally, just isn't much short activity from, uh, we can even see the beginnings of a further decline in uh, the DOC right here and the uh, cyan fading, but you also have short-term buyers fading. So mid-term buyers look like they're filling in the slack in this particular case where we see the green crossing above. And it's not going to take much to see a uh, red pivot up here, and that will be a P2, and that would be enough to break into new highs. I think the NASDAQ's already done that. So... Got that uh, propelling nature, uh, the rising shakeout. I think it's just more of a continuation. And again, it's, you know, in opposition to what a lot of people think as far as, you know, the fact that just because rates have gone up, you know, there has to be a, uh, you know, collapse or something like that in the economy. It just didn't make any sense. And I think that uh, when we look at it, we look at oil in that too, because it makes a big difference as to, uh, just free cash flow capability of businesses and that to do more because they're not spending as much on energy costs, which really don't add anything productive to the situation. Uh, from a treasury standpoint, uh, it's still strong demand for uh, treasuries as people uh, look to capture some of the increased uh, yield, uh, particularly as inflation in some people's minds softening that makes it more attractive and also certainly more secure. But uh, if the market continues to rise, they're going to be on the wrong side of that equation, uh, relatively speaking. From an oil standpoint, still in the low 70s, that's comparatively much better and at the bottom of, you know, the range for the last, you know, since the end of December. So it's a, a welcome set up, but certainly below that would be uh, far more appealing, uh, particularly to stave off uh, any of the negative effects from uh, uh, rate increases in that. Uh, Euro taking a little bit of a uh, break from its uh, power run there, and I think that, that may become more of an issue really relative to banking in that, and if there becomes more uh, Credible uh, developments that, that banks in the European Union are suffering more uh, despite liquidity. And I think it be also becomes a question of uh, will the ECB even have the ability to do anything on rates? It, it just doesn't seem like it, even if they're talking about it. Um, things are a bit too fragile as it is. And as we talked about, you know, the war over uh, Ukraine, and that certainly has much more of an impact uh, on the EU and uh, how things go because. Uh, the slightest uh, disruption could have a material effect on uh, what's taking place within the European economy. Uh, from a gold standpoint, still holding on. Uh, we would expect uh, gold to be uh, doing okay. You had this uh, giant MBI uh, spike here that should create a little bit of a negative push, but uh, correspondingly, you really had a fall off of new buyers in that, uh, uh, which should result in a break of that uh, support should there be any weakness, but the shakeout has been remarkably strong within the uh, overall setup. So I think we're just having a little bit of uh, absorption of uh, some of the moves and inconsistency as to how strong inflation that will be. Um, but I don't know that it's all inflation driven. I think some of it is also the fact that uh, China has been buying record amounts and it just looks to be uh, people unhappy with the amount of deficits and that that are continuing to pile up. So it's one of those hedges, if you want to call it that. And the same with Bitcoin and that, uh, of course, you know, it was on a nice tear until, you know, the Binance situation again. So it just seems like every time uh, cryptos uh, catch their new space, uh, you know, moving back uh, to calmness, they get hit with some other kind of mini confidence scandal and I think that that really uh, and it's legitimate because I mean if your capital gets tied up uh, it's a frightening thing so I mean, you see the same thing in ETH and that and it's just a consolidation and a strong MBI weight there's no question you know, we should move back towards the 50% level from a 50k standpoint you can see the day was sort of mixed where peaks all the way to uh, new low but pretty much just filled in uh, 
the last setups of uh, positive extremes that went all the way back to right here, filled it in beautifully, and then just took off straight from filling in that uh, positive extreme. I did have to convert to a five minute chart because for whatever reason, the 5K just takes forever and doesn't promulgate, so it's bizarre. And the, while well, the 5K uh, is nice because it takes away the noise, and here's what you get with the five minute is just a lot of noise. Yes, you get the clarity and movements, but um, when there's rapid things, you know, uh, taking place in the tickets, Far more effective from a trend standpoint uh, to capture it. Uh, even from the short side, that it's like the just the waste of time uh, versus you know just knowing what trades are actually taking place, and so you get a lot longer chart that doesn't always have relevance uh, as far as data in this particular case. This is a good one to point out. Uh, we go to the Fibonacci. And we had tick chart on, it's not going to help. So, as we just get rid of that. And voila. I think it's most relevant when we move to like post market because you just don't have as many trades. So, you get all this time detail that volume wise really doesn't represent a significant amount. So you just gotta, kinda have to ignore the spacing of it and think of it as just a short move back to slightly over the 100% mark, which is exactly where we are. So we're pretty much at the high point of uh, ending the previous day. But that's the long and the short of it for now. I think that, uh, again, this is a continuation of a, a push, you know, this idea of sell in May go away. Uh, not working out so well for people getting out as the market continues to climb. Um, and it's just an indication that there's still plenty of free cash out there uh, able to fill in the gaps. As always, though, trade well. We'll talk in later.